Let's go over Star Wars The Last Jedi and director and writer Ryan Johnson. This is Mike Zero here. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. Now, as you all know, one of the big messages in The Last Jedi is, of course, let the past die, kill it if you have to. So in today's video, I wanted to go over the symbolism and, of course, intentions of Ryan Johnson by use of that message in The Last Jedi. So going over the first one, which is, of course, tossing the saber. Now in the very beginning this was indeed an unexpected piece in which Luke Skywalker tosses his father's lightsaber over the cliff. Now aside from Johnson using this as a parallel to Return of the Jedi in which Luke tosses his green lightsaber to stand against the Emperor, this was also used as a way to illustrate Luke's bitterness and his lost faith in the ways of the Jedi. This was one aspect that many fans disagreed with what Luke did to his father's lightsaber. Now in the last Jedi documentary, the director and the Jedi, Ryan Johnson says, and I think it's just because the attitude of tossing on the go worked really well. I also wanted to take a look at the Resistance. Now this is another aspect of The Last Jedi that was actually getting killed off one by one, especially when it comes to the escape pods and Haldo's sacrifice. So looking at all of this, the Resistance, all right, Poe's dreadnought plan not only eliminated the entire bombing fleet, but also Ryan introduced the concept of fuel limitations on their ships in order to create a reason of picking off the main ships of the resistance. Now when they depart using the escape pods, they are being destroyed one by one by the supremacy, pushing Holda to sacrifice herself, an individual connected to the past who grew up with Leia. Now the attack by the supremacy and the battle of Crate leaves the resistance as a handful on the Falcon. This was a way for Ron Johnson to start over to create a new rebellion, and it's assumed allies around the galaxy will indeed rebuild just that. Phasma's death was yet another big one in The Last Jedi, and in an interview with IGN, Ryan Johnson actually goes over the death of Phasma and why it needed to be done. He states, I mean, as you can see, man, we had a really full movie already. We had a big, big movie with a lot of characters we were trying to serve. And the God's honest truth is, every character had to find their natural place, and Phasma supports Finn's storyline. Obviously, and they're just until she shows up to fight him at the end. Look through the story that we have. There's just not a lot of space to go into a big Phasma storyline. So the truth is, it's just a very big cast and you have to kind of pick your battles with it. Now the other thing that Ron Johnson tapped into with The Last Jedi was changing the idea of the Force and Force lore, etc. So looking at all of this, changing the Force and rewriting lore, in an interview with the LA Times, Ryan Johnson had this to say, The Last Jedi takes much of what we all thought we knew about this 40-year-old franchise and how the rules of the Force work and expands them in some wild new ways, knowing the doors you were going to open. Additionally, aside from that interview, Ryan has expressed before he wanted the concept of any individual being able to become a Jedi and how it can just be tied to one family that is strong with the Force. I also wanted to go over two symbolic or visual ways that Ron Johnson used the whole entire aspect of that message, let the past die, kill it if you have to, in The Last Jedi. Now the first one being is of course the Skywalker lightsaber and how that was destroyed in this movie. So when it comes to the Skywalker, you know, the Skywalker lightsaber, this was actually another one, all right? Another was the destruction of Anakin's saber. It was used as a visual way by Johnson of letting go of the past and to let it die. Now the biggest question of all going into episode 9, which by the way will be directed by J.J. Abrams, will it be rebuilt or even perhaps modified into something completely new for Rey to identify herself with? Now another one is the burning of the tree by Yoda and Luke attempting to burn it down of course. Now the biggest part in this movie was the tree, right? It's a sacred tree that actually contains the sacred Jedi texts. Now, the burning of the tree was a symbolic and visual way to represent the concept of letting the past die by director and writer Ryan Johnson. Luke was ready to burn the tree down, but showed hesitation until Yoda burned it down with lightning. However, Yoda knew the books were not in the tree. So that's an interesting thing to know. And looking at all of this, one of the big things that a lot of fans didn't expect to see was of course the death of Supreme Leader Snoke. And Ryan Johnson actually has come up with a ton of reasons to this decision that I also want to go over as well. 
So with the death of Supreme Leader Snoke, all right, this actually came as a surprise because Johnson wanted to kill the character off in order to disconnect Kylo from the past and shift from the concept of master and apprentice to make him independent. Now, Ryan explains that Kylo's arc in this movie Okay, in this movie, besides his relationship with Rey, I saw as the big arc for Kylo breaking down this kind of unstable foundation that he, and then rebuilding him, or building him to where by the end of the film, he no longer ju was just a Vader wannabe, said Johnson, but he stepped into his own as kind of a quote-unquote villain, but a complicated villain that you understand, right? So with that in mind, the idea that Kylo would get to that place by the end of it led me to think, well, then what is Snoke's place at the end? And does that work with him? Just kneeling before Snoke at the end? No. If Kylo's gotta be a place of actual power, the ultimate expression of that would be him ascending beyond his master. I wanna move on to the next one here, and this all has to do with shedding layers and the destruction of Kylo Ren's mask. Now, the moment in which Snoke tells Kylo, alas, you are no Vader, you are just a child in a mask. This is what finally disconnected Kylo from the use of his mask, Johnson explained. The concept of shedding layers with Kylo Ren, how the destruction of his mask is his transition from adolescence into adulthood. Now, the moment in which Luke says, I came to this island to die, when Luke says, all right, like me, they are the last of the Jedi religion, and it's time for the Jedi to end. This sends Rey into deep questioning of the legend of Luke Skywalker, asking him why, with no answer as Luke leaves the tree. Now, Johnson wanted to put Luke's head in a different place. In The Art of the Last Jedi, great book by the way, Johnson says this about that moment. If you think you are going that way, and if you think you are going away from the past, you are fooling yourself. The only way to go forward is to embrace the past, figure out what is good and what is not good about it. But it never is going to, and it is never going to be a part of who we all are. And that includes Rey, who grew up hearing the legend about the Jedi, so the notion of nope, toss this all away and find something new is not really a valid choice, I think. And that's what Ron Johnson had to say. And the big one, finally, the death of Luke Skywalker. Now, this was a huge thing for a lot of fans that we also didn't expect to see in this movie. Sure, a lot of people were talking about this before the movie released, but when it actually came out, you know, it was pretty surprising to see Luke Skywalker's robes falling down to the ground on that rock as he vanishes, becoming one with the Force due to due to exhaustion by using the force projection technique. So looking at all of this in an interview, all right, with the Huffington Post, this is what Ryan Johnson had to say. So he states, it does go back a little bit to what he said at the beginning of The Last Jedi. What do you think one guy walking out there with a lightsaber can do? The answer is, create a legend that will spread hope. And once he's done that, combined with the physical toll it's taken on him, you can make the case that that, well, then there is nothing more powerful than he could accomplish. So also Ryan Johnson has gone over many other reasons as to why Luke Skywalker's death was pretty much needed in this movie, was to inspire a younger generation for hope and to fight the big fight. So anyways guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section of Ryan Johnson's intentions and pieces of symbolism in The Last Jedi of the whole entire concept of let the past die, kill it if you have to. I know that Ryan Johnson broke a lot of rules as well, such as this movie having no lightsaber duel was another one. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this overall. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.